Um, don't know how he survived this long, honestly. Just chuck anyone else in the car. It's really going to be strange for a while, but can he, can he be competitive? Can he win, win races? He's a great captain. I'll give him that. But as a tactician and as a field setter, Pat Cummins is woeful. All right, g'day everyone. We're going to kick off with Formula One. We've got a world champion now. We probably felt this was coming for a while, but maybe it sort of ended up taking a bit longer than we thought. Just wanted to say a couple of words first up about Max and probably didn't like him a hell of a lot early days, particularly when he's beating Danny Rick back in the day and when they were still together, that sort of thing. And then got to say, I loved him knocking off Lewis in 2021. It was bizarre, that final race, but it was just, I always like it when a, a dominant guy gets chopped down and then started to hate Max when he became the dominant guy and was super arrogant and just winning race after race. And then I think I respect him more after this year because... To come away with that championship, I, I really felt that when I crossed the line in Vegas, I was like, oh, it's done, you know, it's been um, challenging at times, but I'm, I'm very proud of how we handled everything. We always see like, often it's the best car seems to be, you know, the guy that wins a world title. And over the back half of this year, he hasn't had the best car and he's still made that thing work. I think we all look at the Brazil race and just go, holy <laughs> to go from 17th. Like that that was what sealed the world title. You know, it was an incredible drive. So four in a row, it's not to be sneezed at. It's pretty incredible. Not many guys have done it. What about you, Jimmy? Where do you want to go with Max? I think you've, you've summed it up pretty well there. You, you, it was such a hate, love, hate, love sort of relationship with him. And like, you can't deny that he belongs in the GOAT conversation. Like the, the Brazil drive, one of the best, Formula One drives I've, I've ever seen. Pissing down. Pissing down. Back every of the grid. Driver, yeah. Every driver struggling to keep it on track, and Max just drove like it was completely dry. Like that was it was phenomenal to watch. And you're right. The back half of the season, what have we? What do we have? Like seven multiple race winners this this season. Like the first time ever. Mm-hmm. And yet, Max in definitely not the best car for the second half of the season, and still just couldn't be caught. Like Lando, whether or not he was actually ready to challenge we, we he said probably not but i don't know it's it's going to be very different we hope next season with with how things are shaped up in the second half of this season but yeah you can't deny oh. just how bloody great this guy is yeah i agree with you it'll be a really interesting season next season mostly because they won't be putting any money in. this is the cars that we have next year they're like these will be the cars they're not going to develop anything because they're going to be preparing for the 2026 complete change and yeah. trying to like Williams and uh, everyone at the back are trying to go push to the front. But I don't know. It, it's just, uh, and I got the same thing with the Panthers when they won four in a row. It's just like, you get to the end of this. And, and yesterday was like, oh, cool. Max won. Cool. Again. <laughs> Fantastic. It felt and, inevitable, uh, right? It had that feeling. Yeah, it did. Oh, it was, it did it was but coming. it also feels just boring. It's just, yeah. it's a boring result. And it was set up from his dominant start to the season because we had, what, seven different. Um, multiple, multiple race winners yeah, the first yeah. time ever which is fantastic and Max is nowhere near being touched uh, Lando yeah. is a long way back really and we were hoping that Lando might be there might be some a bit of magic that that, that get him up there and he could do a, a Max on Max but um, <laughs> yeah it's just it, it, it deflated me yesterday it was a bit it was a bit of a nothing finish it was, and, it was uh, a, let's be honest it was a boring as race there's a George Russell race, was danced away from the start. The only exciting bit was Lewis going from 10th to 2nd. 17th on the grid to the win. Ah, yes! And, and then, Perez doing that three-wide overtake. I didn't, I didn't mind yeah, that. But that was, that was pretty that much was, it. That was it. And then, and then Leclerc blowing up after the race. Beyond that, it mm. was really nothing. Like, we, we want these safety car riddled races, and we're just not getting them. Yeah. And you're, you're right about the... It's funny, we... We've always wanted something like we, years ago. You know, like during Schumacher's dominance or Hamilton's dominance, you never would have said there'll be seven multiple race mm-hmm. winners. We've also got a thousand races these these days. But yeah. you never, you know, you think if you're going to have that, holy, shit, we're going to have a super competitive championship, and we didn't. I mean, it was it was pretty much over of the first half of the season. A little part of it as well is I think we've got a little bit of a what if with Aussies, just because Weber mm-hmm. was with Vettel for those four. He was winning, you know, the races here and there, but was never able to get it done. Obviously, Danny Rick left before Max started winning his, but they were there together at the same time, coming through with really good cars and whatever. So I think because we're so desperate for another Aussie world title, there's a little bit of a, these guys keep getting it on the same team as an Aussie, but they're just that little bit better or or whatever the difference is. And I think looking to next year, 
it's interesting what you're saying about the cars, Mertz, and McLaren have obviously made a huge leap this year. And like Zach Brown, I thought would have got the ass in the last few years, but he's stuck with it and he's showing some decent results this year. Can they mm-hmm. make that next step or are other guys going to kind of catch up to them? But I think we're all waiting to see Oscar Piastri next year, aren't we? I mean, after what yeah. he's shown this year. Yeah. Well, he's, he's only going to get better and it's going to amplify the pressure on Lando, who, as Helmet pointed out, when, when the pressure's applied, he's, the mental side of his, his game isn't, isn't the best. So when Oscar gets better, which is going to happen, that, that McLaren garage is going to be super interesting next season. But I love uh, Oscar had a bad weekend pretty much. And he still finished seventh. Uh, he yeah. still had a good weekend, a decent weekend. And I think that's the thing that's let people like Danny Rick down in the past where you have a great weekend and you're on the podium and you have a bad weekend and you're nowhere to be seen. Yeah. Um, I think the consistency of Oscar just puts him in such a great position. And I think this McLaren is just going to be as good next year. I think the, the Ferrari is going to be the really competitive car. And it'll be really interesting to see how Red Bull go with the second seat because if they keep Perez, they're f-ing morons, um, as we've been saying all season. Um, don't know how he survived this long, honestly. Just chuck anyone else in the car. It'll be really interesting to see how a young kid with the pressure of being in the Red Bull uh, next to the world champion, uh, how, how they actually go. And I think like a level-headed, focused Oscar is good. And it seems like a pissed-off, angry Oscar is even better. Like he's yeah. sort of got the emotional side of it, whereas Lando maybe doesn't seem to show that. And then I keep thinking about they're going to make such a song and dance about it, but when we see Lewis in red, it's going to be this massive thing. It's going to look weird. It's going to take a while to get used to seeing him in that oh, car. absolutely, it will. It's really going to be strange for a while, but can he, can he be competitive? Can he win? I, I reckon races? it's the perfect idea, a perfect time for him to go now. Ferrari yeah. has really come on. Mercedes is back where they are. I think they've the, um, both him and George have driven the car a lot better than the car actually is. Um, and uh, the switching into a Ferrari now, I, I still think Lewis is one of the best drivers on the on the I grid. think I honestly, yeah. I honestly think with the way that that Ferrari is looking, Lewis could win his eighth. He very well could. Uh, he's just such a good driver. Well, should we switch to a bit of cricket? I don't know. Maybe the less said, the better. From an Aussie perspective, this has been bloody pathetic. Uh, it looked pretty good when we rolled them for 150, but that feels like a lifetime ago now. Barring one of the top order blokes maybe getting a ton and extending it, but I just can't see it. And so often with these four, uh, four things, <laughs> I, think that, I think that reaction says sums it all. It up, yeah. <laughs> so much shakiness in the top order. Uh, you know, uh, there's just so many concerns. Like, what's Boomer and a bit of spin and whatever going to be like in the fourth innings? But anyway, it'll most likely be done by this goes live. But I, I'm concerned about the state of the Australian team, to be honest. And it's a five test series, so let's see what happens. But We've talked about the succession planning thing a whole bunch of times, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of that. And also guys knocking down the door to get in the team. We'd love to see McSweeney get a few runs. But, yeah, I'm actually a bit worried about this team. It's been very successful, but the bowlers are all old, apart from Cummins is 31. Yeah, I think there's some question marks about where we go from here, particularly if we come off losing this series. I'm completely baffled about the planning going into this series. Before the before the test, Cummins came out and said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm really fresh. I haven't played... Any Red Bull cricket oh, in perfect about preparation. Six they all. Like, yeah. Is that perfect preparation? Like I get you rested, but you haven't had any game. Yeah. Uh, game time, yeah, except for one Shield match. Yeah. Um, I, like, yeah. It just shows that we we also kicked up that they none of them were in the one day like or hmm. the T Twenty series. Like I don't know. Just what what the f- did they do with the ball? Like as we were talking about last night, Mertz. Yeah. The Aussie bowlers couldn't get the thing to do anything. And just kept plodding in, trying to do the same line. And then they threw the ball to Marnus, which we'll get onto that later. (laughs) But then Boomer comes on for three overs at the end of the day. And he's got it moving around more than Shane Warne used to be able to. Bloody and Siraj. Was, Siraj was moving in a mile as well. It was just the, the, the disparity in what the Aussie bowlers were producing to what the Indian bowlers produced at the end of the day was unbelievable. Us losing three wickets... Another 15 minutes, 20 minutes of play, we would have been four or five down mm. comfortably. It was mm. it, it is as ugly as ever, and we have to make changes. The, the team can't – we've relied too long on this team without going, oh, no, we won't make changes, but it, it's time. There's, there's so many players that are just don't look interested. I, I get blown away every time we play in India, how we go, oh, the pitches are doctored and they're, they're – 
No, they're not. They're not doctored. They're set up for Indian spinners to do what they do best because no one can play spin in basically the world. Even Indians can't really play the spin anymore. But then we bring them down here and we go, you know what? We're going to give the fairest bowling wicket. We're going to not trust our... what They made such a big thing about the first Australian um, order who has four bowlers all on over 250 wickets. They make such a big deal of that. But why don't we trust them to actually take the wickets? Why yeah. do we put uh, put these wickets that are, like, on the first two days were an absolute minefield? Like, I don't know how it was. It, it was almost unplayable, but it didn't look like it was doing all that much either, yeah. oh, except for when Boomer had the ball in his hand. Um, yeah, well, not on day two. Well, they were none for 200 or whatever. Yeah. They, yeah. they didn't have any trouble. Day but one, in, yeah. in the past, India have been scared to come to... Uh, Perth. They they've <laughs> dictated that there will not be a Perth match. We'll play everywhere else. Yeah. Um. Uh, there's no fear for them now. The uh, Optus doesn't have the same um the same personality as um yeah. the Wacker no. used to have. But <laughs> why don't we trust our bowlers? We're just not trusting our bowlers, and we're not giving our batters a chance to actually get in because they're coming in in this <laughs> minefield that they can't. Bat but on, and they're all out of form, and they're all old. Our, our batting lineup now doesn't strike the fear of God into no. any bowling attack outside of Travis Head. It's just, uh, and even Travis, like, he's oh. so hit and miss. I don't, I don't know. But I don't think the pitch has got much to do with it. I think we've been completely outplayed. I mean, we rolled them for yeah. 150, and then they rolled us for 100, and then they showed that they can bat on the pitch. I miss those old whacker wickets with the Fremantle doctor and 150 oh k's God, an hour, and uh, that was fantastic. And it scared the out of you know visiting teams but they and they talked about it every time we have a test over there they talk about it being quick and all the rest of it and mm. it never is you know what they want it to be um i'm, I'm very concerned about the lineup both ends really i mean yeah. all, all the the bowlers apart from cummins like i said is 31 the other guys 33 34 gary Lyons 37 and then obviously the guys at the top of the order <laughs> i mean minus and uh travis i think it is are only 30 but minus minus what did he's he get? He just looked out so of out of form. Yeah. Um, also, I just wanted to say something quickly about the build-up. Like, I'm used to the start mm. of the Aussie summer of cricket being like, let's go, so pumped. I think the fact we had Australia A versus India A in a shield game as the warm-up acts didn't really help. And like you're saying, Mertz, these boys have had no red ball cricket at all. Uh, at least India, even though they got flogged, at least they're coming off three, mm. you know, competitive tests that helped them. So... The planning's wrong. Having a T20 and one-day series right before the test series doesn't make sense. Nah. I don't know what Cricket Australia and the selectors and all of that are doing. And I think there's real concerns. And then I look, you look ahead, Sri Lanka away for two tests in February and then the Ashes this time next year. That is the test yeah. schedule for Australia. Like, come on. This is a massive look, you look problem. Look ahead to the next test and India have got even bigger weapons sitting yeah. on the outer. Whereas you look at Australia. They're going to get stronger. And- yeah, Who I don't know. We got to come they, in. They were like, talking about Rod Sharma coming in. I'm like, okay, he's been in such scintillating form. That <laughs> that's that's, that's the that's again another disparity in the fact that India have these unbelievable weapons just sitting in the rooms ready to go. Whereas Australia, we've got a, an, an empty cupboard. But we need to make changes of, because some players just shouldn't be. And the, the, the fact we were still talking about Marcus Harris and Cameron Bancroft and the same guys, it's like at least we've got McSweeney who's 25 and hopefully we'll, he'll get a chance and we'll see him do something. But mate, all the Indians that were not in form after the New Zealand series look pretty good <laughs> this yeah. test. See, this is the thing though. India blood all their people. They blood yeah. them in advance. And our big series are India and uh, England. And we've got them back to back. So Kawaj is 38. He plays again next year. That he's thirty nine. He's forty by the time we get a two a, two, uh, a tour where there's not one of those big names. Yeah. This was perfect last year. We could have against Pakistan started flooding some of these young players. Yeah. Started actually seeing if they can because we want to pick them to drop them. We want to pick them. Yeah. And so when they get through that first part and then they go, oh, wow, actually, test cricket's a little bit hard, you drop them and let them score the runs. Honestly, that was Simon I... Kadic. That was um, Matthew Hayden. That was all these guys that yep. went into the team, got dropped, and went, I'm going to go away and score an absolute ton of runs. Yeah. And you find out who's actually got, got it. 
And then it's, some of them also flourish when they get that yeah, opportunity yeah, as well. Absolutely. Some guys, yeah. young that's age, the guys you want. That's the guys you temperament. want. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. It's, it's time for the selectors to start being a lot more ruthless with these blokes who have been around for a long time. Mm. Like Marnus needs to be dropped and go back and rediscover some form. And yeah. if he doesn't have it, then he doesn't have it, whatever. But on the opposite side of that, with the young guys, we have to give them the time. I would almost guarantee McSweeney will get dropped for the next test. Yeah. Purely yeah. because they'll be like, well, he didn't perform. But yet, For who? Marnus and Steve Smith, who haven't performed, and, and while well, Steve Smith might still in the second innings, yet to be seen, but they will not come close to facing the axe because, oh, no, but they've, you know, look at what they've done. They've got all this and blah, blah, blah. I, and I, it, think, I think they'll stick with. Annoying. They'll stick with McSweeney for at least another test, but it wouldn't surprise they, they, me if he doesn't see out the series, definitely, because they yeah. do that knee-jerk kind of stuff. Oh, he's proven he hasn't got it. Oh, they whatever. only do that knee-jerk stuff with the young guys when yeah. it should be the opposite way around. It's f- so dumb. Who would they replace McSweeney with? Yeah. Calling David Warner back. He's the only option I can see because... But who would they replace or worst Steve Smith form. or... Well, Manus, I, well, I would bring, bring Sweeney to three. Constance. Yeah, and I, and I think will, uh, Constance, look, Constance is, young, is so hard. It's but, he's so young. He's so unproven. He scored two centuries in the one match. Yeah, so yeah, chucking him in then against Boomer. I I want <laughs> oh Sweeney. Uh, sorry, I want no. I want Constance Constance focusing on taking over Kawaja's spot next. And yeah, I want, yeah. I would go away and say this is not your time. Kawaja will retire soon. No, he, he's that's not your either. time. Look, go away and score just a ton of runs. Just go away and work on your game in Shield cricket and just make it that we. But this is the problem with Shield cricket. And uh, my point about the pitches, the pitches in Shield cricket are just a joke. They are they're terrible road. wickets. Yeah. No, they're, or they're either a road where they go out and score just a buttload of runs and no wickets fall. Or they're just an absolute minefield that the batters can't do anything. So getting out into the middle and actually like facing these guys, it's not fair between bat and ball. It's either really ball focused or really bat focused. And it's not giving them an in between where they can actually develop their game at this top level. And that's the problem with Australian cricket because you're having these kids who are actually half decent and probably could make good test players. But you're destroying their confidence as soon as they're getting there because yeah. you, they're facing, like, uh, the bowlers are all getting up because we're really focusing on developing fast bowlers for a team that we won't ever put new fast bowlers in because you're not dropping Cummins. Stark will be there until he retires and Hazelwood will be there until he retires. The other, and they have the runs on the board and everything, but... the other, <laughs> I think the other big issue for Australia, and it, it just... It, constantly keeps coming up in these test matches where once the, the the other team starts to sort of take the momentum away is when we've got the ball in hand our tactics just go to so it's time he's a great captain i'll give him that but as a tactician and as a field setter pat cummins is woeful and it needs to be taken away from him i uh, i think pat cummins is not a great captain i think he is a great leader i think he's a fantastic leader i think he's one of the best leaders that we've actually had during like my time watching cricket but i think as a tactician he's it's we get to 30 overs and we haven't taken a wicket everyone stand back on the boundary and it's if, no if tactic, either of you no can explain to me what the to point in bringing manus into the bowling attack to bowl four bounces and over and then have him no, do no. his hooping just leg spinners bizarre. from way outside and like around leg stump. Oh, I'll yeah. give you a few dollars. Look, here. Anyone big, can explain that because it's <laughs> a look bigger, bigger picture. George Bailey sits there with his grin on his face, like he knows exactly what he's doing and he's in control. And all you journo's speculating don't have a clue what you're talking about. All the rest of it, and they're coming off World Test Championship victory and keeping the Ashes. Whatever they can look at the kind of runs on the board. For my mind, if we lose this series and badly, that's it. It's wholesale changes. It's new team to go to Sri Lanka. It's yeah, maybe oh so. I mean, tap Steve Smith on the shoulder and say, mate, you're having your farewell at the SCG. But Steve Smith will say, F- you, I'm still the best batter in the world. I've got years left. I can't see him putting his hand up and, you know, ab- no, obliging I- and taking it. But we need sweeping changes. This team needs to be turned over. Yeah. Steve Smith's problem is that he's so. Uh, f- he, he His whole game which made him the best batter in the world was that he would take on the bowlers and go bowl at my pads try just try bowling at my pads yeah, yeah, yeah. and they would be like oh i can i can get an lb and he was just faster but now he's yeah. 35 yeah and the, the reflexes are starting to drop 
But Smith needs to reinvent himself. Smith needs to work out the way to bat now that he's a bit older and the ball's a bit faster for him. Um, well, if, the, if I hear about him finding his hands one more time, I'm going to go and jump off a short pier. I'm, I'm sick of oh, hearing look, that. He, it's I a revolution can, every, every summer. He can, he can find <laughs> his hands. <laughs> Honestly. But you know what? Find your hands, but then score 100 and exactly. another 100. Show and us. Another 100 and dominate the series. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to see that. We want to see right. you. Yeah. Want to see you score some runs, Steve. We want to <laughs> see them all score time. runs. We'd like them all to continue on. And, you know, we, we've loved a lot of these guys. We want to see them come good. But, yeah, the signs aren't looking good. I think it's going to be time for wholesale changes. 